is the big man of this sport. I've got to say, you've done well to secure his services this weekend. Yeah, I was most excited when we secured uh, Roman Nestoranko to come over, and um, yeah, he's world class. He's um, first in his uh, weight in the world, and yeah, he's a good show. Here's Yoshi, he's good, he's really going to want to do well here, throws a lot of low kicks his kick, he's tough but he's going to have to do pretty hard to beat this guy, toughest guy out there for my money, I personally think Roman's going to win it, but the Japanese of course they're really going to want to win uh, the whole thing of course, being Kyokushin come from Japan, it's more than just a little bit uh, of an honour thing for them. Yeah well said, it's a way of life. It really is, for some of the guys who join Kyokushin, it's, it means everything to them. Bit of a slow start. Roman just wants to axe kick him in the head. I love it. He just wants to finish it in and out. No injuries. Win that first bout. Whoa. Straight to the head there. Yeah, real Brazilian style kick that, isn't it? Yeah, he's got a real, uh, like, free jointed leg, the way he lifts and kicks it, Roman. Yeah, we do have... I mean, within Kyokushin itself, you know, the different countries do fight, uh, fight slightly differently. The Japanese, very traditional, of course. The Brazilians, a bit more flair. And, of course, the Russians, they're really just down and they just want to punch the hell out of each other. Karate is an emerging sport in Russia. Yeah, it really is. I mean, Kyokushin, of course, is the hard-style karate. It really is uh, basically like the Thai boxing of Japan. Yeah, you're right, David. Karate and martial arts was banned in the USSR to 1989. So, yeah, it's only really been going 22 years. And they, they produced the champions, I tell you. Wow, that was a good kick there. Oh, look at He's having a go. They'll have a crack at it. They know how much this means. This is awesome, this tournament. Have this kind of level of competitors in Australia and this kind of tournament for monies uh, is awesome. You know, I wish that they were doing that when I first started doing Kyokushin. Would have made it a lot easier. Yeah, Yoshinori's going to give Roman a run for his money here. He's very focused. He's quick, isn't he? He likes to throw that, that right low kick, try to stop that head kick of uh, the Russians, and he'll do it. He's got that extra height. He's a lot bigger than what he seems. I mean, I'm 6'3", and he's about the same height as me. Maybe even a little bit taller, but he doesn't look that big on screen. But really, you get up close to him, he's a big man. I agree with you. When I uh, saw him a little earlier, I was surprised how big he was, having seen vision of him previously. He doesn't look that big on television. Huge across the back. Yeah, the gi kind of holds, uh, hides it a little bit. Gi, of course, is what they're wearing. The Japanese word, maybe call it a karate uniform. Japanese, a gi. Oh, there you go. What a head kick that was. Straight to the face. Yeah, oh, he's, he wants it. You can tell he's going for it, can't you? Yoshinori just brushed it off, but... Yeah. That one looked like it clipped him on the chin. Mm. Yes. Roman, Roman uh, trains twice a day where he comes from in... Uh, Russia? I just came back from Russia. I tell you, training in that cold would be absolutely horrible. It was minus 30 degrees last time I was there. Those Russians certainly know how to be tough. These punches, Pete, how hard do you think they are? Oh, bare knuckle punches. These guys come back and they've got welts all over the chest. There he goes with that head kick head again. Kick again, yeah. He's got to be careful, Yoshi. He doesn't want to keep those hands up. I mean, he wants to keep those hands up. We'll get knocked the hell out. That'd be terrible. So only seconds remaining on the clock. Yoshinori's trying to... Yes! Oh. Your trademark there, Pete. Oh, the roll kick. Yeah, I picked that up from Gary O'Neill, of course, from Queensland. What an awesome fighter he was in the day. Everyone loves that. And Kyokushin, of course, is quite popular. Yes, uh, Sato Moashi, rolling funder. I think your Japanese is a little better than mine. I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> you think I'll go with extension there, Peter? Yep, it's an ikiwaki. That means uh, it's, a, it's a draw, so they'll give it another go. Uh, which is always tough. What we were talking about before, you know, you've got to put enough in, but if it goes another round, it'll really take it out on you those next couple of bouts you've got to have in one night. Because this is all played over over a couple of hours in one night. Tough work if you don't get your job done quick. Yeah, I think Yoshinori surprised Roman here how tough and hard he is. I was about to say that. I think that uh, Yoshinori might have, might have even exceeded his own expectations. Yes. I don't know. The Japanese always come in with the intention to win. I mean, they're very tough. I mean, there's such a large pool in Japan of people who do Kyokushin um, that you'll be surprised. You know, they can look like uh, the very timid people that the Japanese seem to be. Ooh. They're tough as hell. Look at that. Yeah. Shook it off. No problems at all. Spin back kick there. He's a tough little customer, the Japanese fighter. He's copying some punishment now. He's tough as they come, Yoshinori. Yoshinori wants to keep that push kick out in front of him. Uh, keep Roman off him. He doesn't want to have those punches. Roman's got those long arms, a big back. It's going to start to wear on him. He's going to have to watch out for Roman's kicks, head kicks. He's going to that left line, head him, kick. line him up here and, yeah, he wants to keep his guard up or just 
Sit outside, the range. Once again, that middle body kick right under the arm there. That's going to hurt. I mean, the gi takes a little bit of it, but it doesn't take that sting out of it. Hits you in the right spot. There's those punches again. Oh, a little bit slow. He could have jumped a little higher for a further out. Tom Lavar, the referee. What a good referee he is. I was just about to say, Pete, he's doing a really good job of letting the fights flow. And yeah, let oh, oh, fantastic head kick there. Really uses it. He's out. Hip on, full point. That's it. Show's over. So just Yoshinori in Disneyland, and he's pretty unhappy with himself, too. He hung in and he hung in, but in the end, the Russian really, explo really exploited his height difference, didn't he? Yeah, that it was a gutsy effort, though, wasn't it? Gutsy. So Roman Nestorenko will get the decision, obviously. Roshinori, very disappointed. You can see the body language. He's shattered. Yeah. Well, the Russians, though, had a little bit harder than what they expected, I think. I think he might have thought he would have worked through that a little bit easier. But to go in extension, I wonder how that's going to play in that next fight. Oh, he's just this. jolting his body. So hard. Hard. Shooting kick. The action scaffolding replay. That's how you mark the, the bare knuckle of karate really takes it takes the cake. I mean, it really hurts when they start to whack you with those hands. I mean, you know, come doing boxing and kickboxing, MMA, of course, they've all got gloves on. But this bare knuckle, I tell you, one of those clip you in the jaw, you know about it. Yeah, they condition their hands to put make them bigger, don't they? Like their knuckles and that. Oh, yeah, they do a lot of stuff. Uh, to, oh, jeez. Oh, that would hurt. Let's hear from the winner. He's very happy to have won. He's very honoured. And he would like to thank the crowd. Roman, obviously that now puts you through to the semi-finals. You're a bit of a hot favourite here amongst uh, a lot of the people here tonight. Do you see yourself taking out the tournament tonight? It's his first time here in Australia. He's fallen in love with you guys. He'd like to thank you. You're a fantastic crowd and he hopes to come back again. Спасибо, Roman. Thank you. There he is, the world champion, Roman Nestorenko, emerging the victor in his opening bout against a very game Japanese opponent. Looking forward to the next fight involving Lithuania's Lucas Kabilius and the Hungarian Sander Kovacs. And uh, there are the stats for Lucas on screen. He's a big man, Pete. Yeah, he really is a big man. He's actually a bit thicker than everyone else. And here's Sandor. He's a pretty big guy too, 185 centimetres. So the battle of two big boys. Let's go down to Rick Power for the commencement of the introductions. Oh. So here is the 28-year-old entering the auditorium at South Juniors Leagues Club, host venue for this inaugural full contact karate world challenge. I like the gear he's got on. He's got that ruffled edges at the bottom of his gear. He doesn't have a flash new one on. This is a guy who looks like he's done a lot of hard work to get here. I mean, he's such a big guy. He goes a long way in Kilshin to be big and heavy. You know, it really, you know, it, it pushes it back. It makes you look like you're winning, even if you're not as good as a smaller, more technical guy. Mark, a funny story. I'm led to believe, correct me if I'm wrong, that, that uh, Lucas arrived in this country without any shoes. That's right. He uh, had no shoes. He thought uh, he'd come to Australia just wear thongs and a t-shirt and yeah 
We had to buy him a pair of shoes to take me out for dinner. He was <laughs> he was coming to spend time on the beach, not to do karate. All right, Rick Powell standing by for the introduction of his opponent. Oh. One, two, ten, let's bring out his opponent. the Hungarian. Well done, Rick. Excellent job on the introductions this afternoon. Probably difficult to choose a winner here, Mark. They're fairly equal. Yeah, they've both uh, fought one another in Europe before. Um, but, yeah, I think uh, Lucas will get over Sandor here. Lucas is um, up and coming, pretty big fighter in Europe. And, yeah, he's uh, time's here. So Sandor's favourite technique, the knee kick to the head. You might notice Sandor's only a brown belt as well. Chuk Shin, unlike another, a lot of other styles, they don't just hand out black belts. It takes a long time to get one. Yeah, I remember the first time uh, I went for my Chuk Shin uh, black belt. They absolutely punched the hell out of me, and I, I, didn't, I didn't get my black belt. It was, uh, made me come back and do it all again, and it was uh, a very, very hard day. Here we go. Nice low kicks there. They're really just feeling each other out there. Lucas, of course, got that funny style he has. He looks, he's a very much of a spoiler. He doesn't like to, to use his range so much. You'll see him come in and do some very odd things, but it works effectively for him. He wins a lot of fights this way. Yeah, Lucas got a big, heavy uh, liver hit. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's what I think he's working in to put a few of them in the sand door. A roll kick from a big man is difficult to do. But like I said before, a lot of guys from Kyokushin like to throw a roll kick, but it's really about setting it up. It's not that hard to do, but it is hard to hit someone with. It takes a lot of practice. Yeah, you've got to get it in, Peter, and that's, that's the uh, big thing you've got to do. I, I find the best way to hit someone with it is get them going backwards and then throw when they think they're going back. Get them off on that back foot, bang, right over the top of their hands. Kyokushin guys, uh, no boxing to the face, of course. So they hold their hands a little lower than boxers and kickboxers, but I tell you, that punch around there to the back of the kidneys with no gloves on will make you piss blood for a week. <laughs> Whilst we're watching this, uh, Mark, tell us about the, the charity element associated with the inaugural Full Contact Karate World Challenge. Yes, uh, Schizophrenia Foundation Research is the charity. We've got a cheque for $20,000 we're going to present to them after this event. And, yeah, all our tournaments are linked to Schizophrenia Foundation. Now, Lucas, you'd have to say Pete appears to be on top slightly at the moment. Yeah, he is using his weight well. He's hitting hard with those punches. It's going to make it tough for Sandor. Oh, there it is. That, 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 that's a great hit, yeah. Yeah, right there to the body, I think that, that shot was. He doesn't look happy, does he? You can see the red mark on his body there. He's hurt. So the Lithuanian in control. Less than one minute remaining on the clock here. Third bout of the afternoon. There is not an empty seat available in the auditorium. Full house. There he goes, that lever hit again. Big, strong punches. What Tom Levi actually did just a second ago was score him a half point, which means a, a damaging point. It's like a knockdown in boxing. Ooh. Great shot, that low angle on the floor, isn't it? Oh, it looks awesome. These guys really just working their hands, hitting that body. You really want to go high, then swap your levels, come down to the body, hit the kidneys or the solar plexus, and smash those low kicks into front to finish off that fight. There's a uh, knee kick from Sandor. Sandor's going to have to do a lot more to win this bout. Being a half point down, if you ask me, he's not going to win this. No, nah, he's looking, looking pretty tired here and hurt. He just doesn't look like he wants it. A fake to the head there. Little beanbag there, they throw it in so that just in case that referee's super focused and he doesn't hear the whistle, they throw the little beanbag in and another indication that the bout is over. So Lucas Kabilius will advance to the next round. And the Hungarian Gave it his best shot, but on the day, unfortunately for him, not good enough. Lucas Kabilius from Lithuania currently on screen. The winner 
of the third bout. Here's the replay with our expert commentators, Pete Graham and Mark Murphy. That's shin to shin uh, checking, I tell you. You want to make sure you can condition your shins for that. That can hurt a lot more than just getting kicked in the thigh. Uh, it looks as these guys don't have any pads on underneath either, so they're really whacking hard. Okay, at this juncture, let's go down to Rick with the winner. Ladies, congratulations. Again, another tough fight. You're going to see the sweat pouring out of you. Obviously, a tough one going into two minutes as well. Yeah, it was quite well done. First time. It's always the first place where it ends. And if you can't relax, so this is how it is. Are you surprised to win the extra two minutes? Uh, I hope. <laughs> I hope it will not last longer. Yeah, so you're through to the semi-finals now, that's pretty exciting. Yeah, it's always exciting to be a winner and keep going. Please give it up for Lucas Cavillius, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you're enjoying the inaugural Full Contact Karate World Challenge. We're back in a moment, stay with us. You're watching the world's best athletes in full contact karate. This is the World Challenge, proudly presented by Action Scaffolding, the CFMEU and Dream Team Management. And we appreciate your company on Fuel right around Australia. Welcome back to South Juniors Leagues Club in Sydney South. And next bout comes your way in the opening round of hostilities, Rafael Garcia, of course, uh, hailing from Brazil. 24 years of age and well he's about to face the sentimental champion or the sentimental favorite rather the man that would like to be crowned champion of this tournament australia's daniel trifu 37 years of age you've got to call him a veteran let's see how he fares looking forward to this one here's the mc rick powell well, ladies and gentlemen we now come to the final head in these preliminary bouts let's now introduce you to a very highly credentialed Karate champion, hailing from the beautiful city, from the beautiful country of South America in Brazil, ladies and gentlemen. He stands at 186 centimeters tall. His recorded weight is 96 kilograms. In 2011, he took out first place in the All-American Championships. Would you please make him welcome, Rafael Garcia. Here's the Brazilian. As I said, 24 years of age, 96 kilograms. And he's up against it this afternoon. He's got this entire auditorium, the crowd, against him, Pete. You've got to love Daniel Trifu. He's a great guy. Everyone wants to see him do Well, like I said before, he's my uh, sentimental favourite. It's going to be tough for him to win it. Uh, he's a bit long in the tooth, but don't uh, take that away from him. You know, he's very experienced. Uh, uh, Rafael Garcia from Brazil. Of course, Brazil's always got that super dynamic style that's always fun to watch. You can tell us more about that as this fight unfolds. It's time to hear the introduction for the Australian, Rick. Well, ladies and gentlemen, in this final heat, it's my pleasure now to introduce you to an Australian karate champion who at 37 years of age is the oldest fighter in our tournament this evening. At 37 years of age, 182 centimetres tall, Weighing at 95 kilograms, with an axe kick, the drop of the enemy is his favourite discipline. He was the South Pacific champion in 2000 and 2004, and the Australian champion in 2005. Would you please give a warm Aussie welcome to Daniel Tifu? Here comes Daniel. Look at the determination in his eye. He wants to win this. He knows everyone's there to watch him. Yeah, Dean has put a lot of work in this event. He uh, rates this as a big highlight in his career. Uh, he's excited for this. I was sparring him just the other week, and I tell you, he, uh, 
When he throws those kicks, you know about it. If they connect, they're going to hurt you. Of course, we saw that package at the start of today's program featuring the way in which the fighters prepared for today. And Daniel, how fit is he? 37 years of age. He's built like granite, very determined. Above all, a nice guy. Top bloke. He's been fighting for a long time. He knows how to win these things. He's attempting to qualify for his fifth consecutive world championships in coming months. That's some awesome achievement. Yeah, world tournament, super tough, the best blokes in the world. Yeah, Daniel is in the world tournament team representing Australia in October in Tokyo. Yeah. See how Daniel's got that real low style? He drops his level a little bit. He puts his weight down low. Oh, he smashes those legs. Raphael's a very determined young man. He's um, 